can you cut your meal prep time in half? So that's what I'm gonna be demonstrating, how you can cut your meal prep time in half so you're not spending hours and hours in the kitchen um, meal prepping for the week, and now you can be prepared for an entire week. So I'm actually filming on a few different devices, uh, so if I'm looking in different places, that's why. Uh, but I have everything here, and hopefully this will help you be more prepared for the week. Um, and rather than making that excuse of I don't have enough time to eat healthy, you'll be able to see how no matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you don't have, you'll always be able to squeeze in one hour of your time throughout the entire week. So think of we have 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. You can carve out one hour to prep your meals for an entire week. So this is for me and Jesse. So this is for two people. And you might always start the week with good intentions of eating better and, you know, becoming more prepared. And then you realize the, the days normally get ahead of you and then you're like, oh my God, I'm not prepared. I don't have things to eat. And then when you get home or when you're out and about, you're just grabbing and snacking on things because you don't have things um, prepared for you. You don't have things to eat. You don't have whole food. So you're doing a lot of just grab and go um, junk or you're just sometimes not even eating. And sometimes you'll come up with a hundred different reasons as to why you had to maybe do something else and not eat. But if you have things prepared, you could do both multitasking. So I'm going to be showing you how to meal prep using my grocery haul method. This grocery haul method works. This is what I do. I practice what I preach because this is why I'm always, always able to be uh, prepared with my meal prep because I don't spend hours and hours doing it. I used to spend hours and hours doing it and I realized that it wasn't sustainable because I was making all these crazy intricate meals and it was just too much. So my grocery haul method is each week it will rotate, but I only focus on a few ingredients each week. So you will have two proteins, you will have three vegetables, two carbohydrates and then two fruits for grab and go and then you'll also have add-ons but i'll go over the add-ons right now i'm just going to show you how to prep my meals these are going to be for my lunch and my dinners and then i'll show you what i do for my snacks and um my breakfast so for this week i'm actually doing my two proteins are going to be chicken and ground turkey it's about 12 ounces of each. Um, hold on one second. Okay, that's my little hand. And then I have, so I have two proteins, so chicken, ground turkey. My three vegetables are peppers, zucchini, and broccoli. And then my carbs are rice and sweet potatoes. I have actually jasmine rice this time. You might be thinking like, oh my God, she's eating white rice. Yes, I eat white jasmine rice and I eat brown jasmine rice because one is not worse than the other. They're both good. I like mixing it up. And then I have my two grab and go options for my fruit. These are just for quick and easy. Uh, it's better than running out of the house with nothing. At least you could always eat an apple or eat a banana when you're on the go. So first and foremost, I never prep without my extra olive oil. Extra olive vir virgin, extra olive, extra virgin olive oil spray. <laughs> you just witnessed the Danae moment. So I'm going to spray all of my baking dishes. So I bake all of my vegetables and it's this easy. So I'm going to use this big broccoli bag from Costco. It's amazing. It's big, it's easy, and it's cheap. And the best part about it is it's washed. So I typically need two baking dishes for the broccoli because there's a lot. So I'm gonna use the biggest ones. There you go. You're gonna be like, wow, this is way easier than I thought. So we got our broccoli. Now we have our peppers, which I did not cut in advance, but I'll show you how easy it really is. And I'll probably fast forward this a little bit. Now, typically, I'm obviously not upstairs in my kitchen. Um, but 
Typically what I do as I am preparing my vegetables right now, just imagine my pot of water is now getting boiled for the rice. And I'm just gonna cut up these vegetables. I typically chop up my peppers long ways. And typically eat one while I'm cutting. Why not? They don't have to be pretty, beautiful, and cut perfectly. As long as they're around the same size, they're good. And then if I wasn't talking to you guys, what I normally do while I prep is just either put some TV on. Uh, we have iPhones, so now you can put TV on your phone. Or you can listen to a podcast. Or you can listen to music. I typically listen to some nice Christian music. Or I'll watch a show, but these days I'm not really watching many shows, so music it is. Okay, so I'm almost done with my peppers. I also like to keep the variation of my veggies. I try to keep everything colorful. Some weeks I do have more green than color, but I do try to keep it, you know, colors of the rainbow. So I have yellow, orange, red, green. We have zucchini, so I'm gonna cut the zucchini. I typically peel half my zucchini and leave half skin, half not skin, because I think it gives a better consistency. Zucchini can be a little bit like too soft, but I feel like the skin gives it more flavor. Jesse's not a huge fan of zucchini, but when I do it this way, I do notice that he likes it more. Zucchini is like one of my favorites. Raw zucchini is also my favorite. I'm a little hungry if you haven't noticed. is seasoning your vegetables. When people complain that they don't like vegetables, it's typically because you're eating them too plain most of the time. You need to season them up. So I typically season them up different ways. So I'm gonna put them next to each other. Spray your vegetables. For broccoli, I'm gonna do lemon pepper and garlic salt. There are other seasonings other than salt, pepper, and garlic. You wanna be creative. And I love garlic salt and lemon pepper together. It's a little bit of a twist of salt and pepper and it's really fantastic. It's also really good on asparagus. So, I'm gonna do that on my broccoli. Looks like a crap ton of salt, but I promise you there's not a lot coming out. And then lemon pepper. I do have a heavier hand on the lemon pepper because I like the flavor. And you don't want to be shy with seasonings. You want your vegetables to have flavor. And then for the zucchini, I'm gonna do some little tang. So I'll do some salt. I'll do garlic powder. I put a lot of garlic. My favorite, tahin. Tahin gives it a little like lime sweet flavor. And then I'm going to grab lemon out of my fridge because I don't have it. And I'm going to squeeze some lemon and sprinkle a tiny bit of thyme. So now I got zucchini. And then lastly, I have my peppers, which I do an extra little thing of oil. And I like making them a little bit like chili Cajun, at least this time around. So I got some Cajun seasoning. And 
I got some chili powder. Again, be a little bit heavy with your seasonings. You want them to have flavor. You don't want them to be, them to be boring. And that's it, those are my veggies. I am done with my veggies. If I was upstairs in my kitchen, I'd throw them in the oven. At this point, my water should be boiled. So I throw, out, I throw in my vegetables. I throw my rice in. That's now on the stove. And now I'm just gonna cut my potatoes. You do not have to cut your potatoes. If you want less time, you could spend even less time and just throw your potatoes in the oven whole. I personally like my potatoes chopped up a little bit, not super big, but I do like them in chunks. So I'm gonna cut my potatoes up. Maybe I'll go this way. Much better. <laughs> okay. Veggies, carbs are finished. Veggies are going in the oven. Rice is on the stove. Potatoes are getting seasoned, which I have a glass upstairs. I'm doing my sweet potatoes with salt, pepper, rosemary, and cinnamon. That's my favorite combo and garlic powder. Now that's going to cook. As this is cooking, I am going to cook my meats. So let me go put this away and then I'll show you what I do with my meats. So you're gonna see some little behind the scenes of how Danae cuts her chicken. So my vegetables and my rice is cooking and my potatoes, all I have left are my meats. Now to make it super simple, you could make all your chicken the same. I actually, like to make mine two different ways. So I'm gonna show you. This is like my least favorite part of meal prepping. If there's one thing that I do not like doing, it's cutting the chicken, if I'm being honest. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, there we go. I actually cover my chicken with uh, red paper so it doesn't go all over. And then you can judge me, not judge me, whatever you feel. I do not use a, what's it called, a muddler thing that you, a beef beater or whatever for chicken or beef. I use my fist. I think it comes out better. I have one upstairs. You can use that, of course. I don't recommend using your fist, but this is just what I use. I'd have to figure out a new way, but I don't, and I do want one. <laughs> I slice my chickens in half, throw them in a bowl. Okay, so for two different types of chicken, I'm going to lightly bread these, and this chicken I'm going to do salt my balsamic chicken so salt this is garlic I brought the salt upstairs salt I'm going to do some lemon pepper I'm going to do tahini some thyme <coughs> And then last but not least, I think it's upstairs. I'm going to throw in here. Boom. I'll throw this in the refrigerator until my veggies come out. This I do very, very simply. The other chicken I just throw in. I don't really do a lot of breadcrumb. I just throw it in. 
and get it a little bit crusted. I don't add flour. I don't add egg. I just like to get a little bit of it with some gluten-free breadcrumbs just to kind of change it up a bit. As you can see, I don't really use that much breadcrumbs. It's again, just to get it a little crusted. And that's it. You're actually finished. The only thing you have left to do, now that this is finished, your veggies are still cooking probably for another, I'd say 10 to 12 minutes. Um, you want to cook your ground turkey on top of your stove. So I will actually get the three pounds of my ground turkey, cook it on top of my stove. I have a big pan so I can cook it all at once. I season it with taco seasoning and chili powder. I cook that, that's finished, and then by the time that's done, I'll be able to take my vegetables out, throw my chicken in, and I'm done. And I'll show you how I do that at the end. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through on what to do now. Um, unfortunately, I have some audio issues, so I still want to share the best part, which is what to do when everything is done cooking. So I have my rice, I have my vegetables, I have my two carbs, which are the sweet potatoes, um, alongside the rice and my two meats, the ground turkey and the chicken. So now you can store and prep this one out of three ways. I recommend two ways, but there is of course a third option that I'm gonna review first. So if you don't really want to separate these into containers, you can just put each individual item that you cook, the peppers, the broccoli, the zucchini, the sweet potatoes, throw them in big containers and throw them in the fridge. And then throughout the week, you can make your plate as you go. Now, the reason why I don't suggest this option is because we're doing this for time and efficiency. And we don't really wanna waste time throughout the week making our meals and having to take the containers out and put them in a meal. So you can do that, of course, but the other option is to make and build your own meal like I am right now, as you can see. I am going to uh, prepare my meals with a protein, a carb, and a vegetable. So I have my ground turkey, I have my rice that I'm now throwing in, and now I'm also adding in my zucchinis. And now you can do this for all your meals and just make different variations. You can do the ground turkey with the sweet potato and broccoli. You can do the chicken with the rice and some peppers. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you are doing this in a way that now you can just kinda grab the meal and go. So another thing that you want for the week because now you have all this food prepared you want to make sure that your meals are different they're not always tasting the same and that they have lots of flavor I'm all about flavor because if your food is filled with different variations of flavor then you're gonna to want to keep eating it so I always pick three toppings that I could dress my meals with for this week I have the chili pepper sauce it's from Trader Joe's it's amazing I love it and it's not super hot if you're sensitive to spice I have the Primal Kitchen Primal um, BBQ sauce, and then I have balsamic vinegar. So all of my meals, depending on how I pair it, I'm going to use these toppings. Um, I highly recommend the Primal Kitchen dressings because they're amazing. They have low, they're not filled with a lot of sugar, if any. Um, they're gluten-free, dairy-free, soy, soy-free, canola oil-free. They're made with really good ingredients. Now, the other way for you to store your food the way that I personally do it, because this is the way me and Jesse like it, we actually will weigh out all of our food the same way every single week, and we put every individual item in these little small containers that you can see up there. So I weigh out my ground, all of my meats, so my ground turkey and my chicken at 100 grams. All of my vegetables, no matter what, are 120, and all of my uh, potatoes are 140, along with my uh, rice being 100. So we have a formula or a, a 
guide that we always stick to. So it's very, very easy because no matter what I'm cooking, if it's a vegetable, it's always the same. If it's a protein, it's always the same. Same goes for the pro the potatoes and the rice. So this makes tracking very easy if you are tracking. Another reason why this is also good is because if you aren't tracking, at least if you're making your meals with the same portions, now you know you're really eating for your goals um, and keeping you on track. So when you uh, tr uh, create your meals, you want to make sure that you're storing them the right way. This is critical when it comes to reheating your food and making sure that it tastes fresh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put all of my meals in the containers. I'm going to put my meals from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the fridge. And then I'm going to put the rest in the freezer. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure all of your food is cool. You don't want it to be warm. You don't want it to be hot because when you put in hot or warm food in a cold temperature environment and then you reheat it, it gets, the consistency gets gross. It can grow bacteria. It, that's really what gives you that weird taste when you're reheating food that people don't like. So reheating and storing your food is really the most important. And I hate to break it to you, but most restaurants are serving food that was previously frozen. Um, not all, but there's a lot that too, and it's just because they know how to reheat it and store it properly. And lastly, you want to, um, if you are not someone who tracks your meals, you want to follow the 40-40-20 rule. 40% protein, 40% vegetables, 20% carbohydrates. So you will be able to create your meals and know that you have the right portion for what you need. So that really is it in regards to storing your food and putting your food in containers. It really doesn't take that long. It's maybe an extra 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops, but I can't see it taking longer than that. And last but not least, you want to have add-ons for every single week. So this goes for my snacks and my breakfasts. So I always want to keep in mind, okay, what are going to be my go-tos for my breakfast and my snacks for when I'm going? So I have my, my fruits, my banana, and my apples for when I need something quick to grab. And then this week, I'm going to have rolled oats, protein bars, and wraps. So I have my rolled oats that I can do for after my uh, protein shake. I can have it for breakfast. Um, I have my protein shake. Oops, this is a little stalling. I have my protein shake that is a staple every single day. So I don't really count that as an add-on, uh, but my protein shake is something that I have pre and post workout. And then I could add my rolled oats for breakfast to have my carb. Um, if I'm leaving quick on the go for someone who needs to go to work and just don't have time to cook anything in the morning, you could grab a protein bar. And the reason why I'm adding the wraps for this week is because I like making quesadillas with the wraps. Um, the wraps are a good way for you to make egg sandwiches in the morning. If you do have time to cook, you could scramble some eggs, put it in a wrap. Um, so I always like adding other things that don't require much cooking that I could add to the week on top of my cooked meals. So this is really it. All you need for this is an hour. If you want to maybe add the time that you have to put your food in the containers, you could add another 10, maybe 15 minutes to it, but that's it. And now you have your lunches and your dinners along with your grab and go snack and breakfast for the week. You are always prepared. Um, and really, it, it is that simple. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Just make sure that you're really seasoning your stuff up because it'll allow you to have a lot of flavor and variety throughout the week. And then what I like to do is just rotate this. So next week, I would do different proteins, different vegetables, different carbs. For example, maybe next week I'll do shrimp with chicken. Um, you don't have to do chicken again. I just typically have chicken every week because I like to because I make it different ways. Um, and then maybe for my grains next week, I'll do little baby red potatoes and I'll have quinoa. And then for my vegetables, I can do three new vegetables, maybe some green beans, some Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower. So you will always have a rotating menu, which is fantastic because you can never get bored. And then, of course, I'll add three new add-ons. So I hope this was helpful. I apologize for the glitch that you couldn't really hear what I was saying in this last section, uh, but I still wanted to deliver you know, the tips on 
how to really cut your meal prep time in half. And before you go, I wanna make sure that I invite you to my free seven day challenge where you will learn seven simple habits on how you can create a long lasting lifestyle change. So get out of the diet mindset into a new healthy lifestyle. My free challenge really has a ton of value and content in there for you to take advantage of. You have free recipes, workouts. I also have my free gut health ebook that helps you determine whether or not you have gut health imbalances. And if you do, what can you do to fix it? And last but not least, one of the most frequently asked questions is, Danae, what supplements should I be taking? So I actually put together a supplement guide for you so that you know what supplements will help you best and also help you feel your best so you're not wasting money on things that you don't need. So go ahead, click the link above and below, join the free seven day challenge. All you have to do is put in your info and then keep an eye out for your email with details to follow. So. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Please be sure to join me where I will be sharing you with you seven simple eating hacks for on the go. This week, I think the trend is all about time. How can we live a healthy lifestyle? How can we lose weight? How can we boost our metabolism? And how can we really just transform our healthy life, our life into a healthy lifestyle without having to invest so much time because we can all do it no matter how busy you are. So I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I hope you guys have a fantastic night and I hope you apply these principles with meal prep next week. Talk to you soon.